Hey guys, so the SAG Awards are on the 28th of February, so it's time for me to give you my predictions as to who I think are gonna win the SAGs this year. But yeah, I'm just gonna go through all the categories, we're gonna have a quick chat about them, and I'm gonna give you my predicted winners as to who I think we're gonna see win this year, the SAGs. So shall we get started guys? Yes. Okay, so first category is best male actor in a leading role. And as we know, the five at SAG match for the five at Oscars. So a lot of people will sort of be looking at this category to see who might win at the Oscars. But really it's the BAFTA winner that will <laughs> definitely make this a tighter race. So yeah, we've got Harvey Bardem, Benedict Cumberbatch, Andrew Garfield, Will Smith and Denzel Washington. Out of those five, the there's really three that could take it. Will Smith, Andrew Garfield, or Benedict Cumberbatch. Uh, I'm leaning more towards Will Smith because he is the only one in this category whose film is also up for SAG Ensemble. Yeah, Power of the Dog missed here, and yeah, Tick Tick Boom didn't get any either for SAG Ensemble. So I think that gives Will Smith a slight edge, but also it feels like he's still got the narrative working in his favor, like he did win the Golden Globe. Is he gonna continue that momentum all the way to the end? I do think the race is tightening between um, Cumberbatch and Smith, because I do think Cumberbatch has a very good chance of winning at BAFTA, and that's gonna make it such a you know photo finish at the Oscars for this category. But yeah, for best actor this year, I think it's gonna be Will Smith. I still put Andrew Garfield as a maybe because um, it's just such an actor's role in Tick, Tick, Boom. Like, it's an actor's performance where I can see actors really loving it. Like, it's a real showcase performance from Andrew Garfield. And yeah, if he's to, to surprise anywhere, it will be at SAGS, because he won't surprise at BAFTA, was nominated there. And yeah, part of me just thinks maybe he could just sneak up out of nowhere and maybe win Best Actor at SAG. It's the type of elasticated, larger than life performance that the actors might get behind. So yeah, I could see Garfield snatching it, but I'm still predicting Will Smith. Again, Benedict Cumberbatch, we can't rule him out either because he has been the critics darling this award season. He's won the most in the critics groups. So maybe they'll champion him here. And if he does win at SAG, <laughs> I'd say it's most likely that Benedict Cumberbatch would go on to win the Oscar for sure, because it just implies it. He's got the support of the actors branch and actors do make up the biggest voting branch of the Academy. So yeah, if Cumberbatch does pull off a win here, then yeah, I would say it's probably gonna be Cumberbatch that takes the Oscar as well. But yeah, I'm gonna go with Will Smith for this one. All right, next up we have, oh, here we go. This is gonna be a fun one to discuss. Outstanding performance by a female actor in a leading role. So yes, in this category, Jessica Chastain, Olivia Colman, Lady Gaga, Jennifer Hudson, Nicole Kidman. Yeah, this is this is a wild one to predict because uh, yeah, we're not we've not got Kristen Stewart here. This is gonna be a tough one to call because a lot of people are sort of leaning towards Nicole Kidman because she won the Golden Globe, and yes, there's a logical argument for her to carry on that momentum. Also, Nicole Kidman hasn't ever won a SAG award for a film performance. She has won for TV for the Big Little Lies series, but she hasn't won for a movie yet. And she has been nominated quite a lot before and still hasn't won. And often with the SAGs, they do sort of like tend to go for a performance, which, sorry, they tend to go with an actor who looks like they're overdue for recognition. So I can see Nicole Kidman winning here for sure, but, Mmm, I don't know, I can make an argument for so many women in this category. The only one I'm not 100% confident on is Jennifer Hudson. Just because her nomination here is kind of her only big nomination anywhere. And I don't feel like people will be going out of their way to watch Respect. Um, even though it's a great performance, I just don't see Jennifer Hudson winning this. However, I can see Olivia Colman winning it, I can see Jessica Chastain win it, and I can see Lady Gaga winning it. Part of me wants to see Lady Gaga win it just for the lols and the chaos that it's gonna bring with the Best Actress race, because, yeah, Lady Gaga can't win an Oscar, she wasn't nominated. So if she does win, and it's possible she could, it would be a brilliant win in terms of like what it's gonna do for the award season pundits. We're just gonna lose our shit if that happens. But <laughs> Part of me wants to see it happen, yeah. I have to make a compelling argument for Jessica Chastain because like Andrew Garfield and Tick, Tick, Boom, this is another real 
show-stopping performance from uh, Jessica Chastain, and I can see it being a performance that you know actors really enjoy because it really does. It's one of those performances, performances which demonstrates an actor's abilities across the board. Like she transforms into the role, she gets the accent right, the physicality, she sings, she cries, she screams. Like it's just, it's such a big juicy role. And I can see them honoring Jessica Chastain. She hasn't won a SAG award for an individual acting performance. She has won as part of an ensemble for the help, but she had, she hasn't won one individually yet. This is her third SAG nom. So yeah, she, could be seen as someone overdue for a win, but I do think Nicole Kidman does have a slight edge because the Academy nominated um, three actors from being the Ricardos, J.K. Simmons, Javier Bardem, and Nicole Kidman. So it does kind of imply that actors do like the acting in being the Ricardos, and I can see Nicole Kidman just about clinching it, but yeah, mm, part of me, I, it's hard to explain, but part of me wants to take a risk here and go for Jessica Chastain because I can afford to be bold in this category because no one really is a front runner in this category. Like you can make the argument Nicole Kidman is a slight front runner because the Golden Globe win, but that's all there is really to push her ahead of the pack slightly. But yeah, Jessica Chastain, I just have a feeling. It's a feeling, guys. And sometimes, like, when you get a gut feeling, you should just sort of go with that. So I'm taking a risk in this category, and I'm going to go with Jessica Chastain. I could also see Olivia Colman surprising here, just because she's Olivia Colman. She has won acting before for TV at the SAGs with uh, The Crown, but she hasn't won an individual SAG nom before. And sometimes, like, when an actor does miss, for previous work, they do make up for it later at the SAGs, like with Glenn Close winning for The Wife, which actually beat Olivia Colman that year. So yeah, sometimes they do sort of on a like collective body of work. So yeah, maybe Olivia Colman will get the win. And if the thing is, whoever wins at SAG for Best Actress is going to be a defining factor as to what people will you know predict at the Oscars. And yeah, whoever wins at SAGs, I'm guessing a lot of people will put their money on whoever wins at the SAGs to win at the Oscars. So yeah, like, it's going to be a deciding factor as to <laughs> who's, who people are going to predict for Best Actress. But yeah, this, this race is so open for Best Actress at the Oscars, like, you know, it's really wide open. So yeah, I, even I, even whoever wins this, I don't know, will be an assured winner at the Oscars because yeah, it's absolutely topsy turvy. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna go bold. I'm gonna go with Jessica Chastain for the eyes of Tammy Faye, <laughs> and I'll probably be proven wrong. But yeah, sometimes you gotta go big or you gotta go home. Okay, so next up we have outstanding performance by a male actor in a supporting role, and we've got Ben Affleck, Bradley Cooper, Troy Kotzer, Jared Leto, and Cody Smith McVie. Okay, so. With this category, I'm more willing to take a risk for my SAG predictions than I am with my Oscar predictions. Like, the smart, sensible, predictable, safe choice is Cody Smith McPhee, because he has been winning all the critics group circles, and like, he has the momentum, he just keeps winning everything, but if there's going to be a challenger, now is the time for it to happen, which is why I'm gonna be bold again, and I'm going to predict Troy Kotzer for Coda. And let me try and explain why. It was this time last year that Ya Jung Yoon came out of the woodwork and started winning Best Supporting Actress everywhere. Her first big significant win was at the SAGs, then she won the BAFTA, then she won the Oscar. Can Troy Kotzer do the same? I think it is possible. Although I will say, I think Ya Jung Yoon had an easier journey than Troy Kotzer does because she overtook the critic's darling who was Maria Bakalova, which was a, you know, a mostly improvised, strictly comedic performance. It was slightly easier for her to win, you know, having a performance that was in a best picture contender. And she was, you know, so heartwarming in it. She was funny. She made you, you know, feel the feels. So yeah, it was easier for her to do it, whereas, Cody Smith McPhee, he's in The Power of the Door, which has all the buzz, the steam and momentum right now. Like it's it's the most nominated film at the Academy Awards, but oh, sometimes heart 
trumps um, quality. <laughs> Sorry. Was that shady? I'm not saying that Troy Kotz's performance isn't quality. It is, but they're very, they're two very different performances because Cody Smith McPhee's performance is weird, subtextual, and internal. It's beautifully done. Whereas Troy Kotz's is heartwarming and emotional. It makes you cry. It makes you feel like it's it's a performance you love watching. So they're both very different performances and I can see voters voting with their heart. Like also Troy Kotzer is the first ever deaf actor to be nominated for an individual SAG award. So that's a big deal. And maybe they'll want to capitalize on it and you know, acknowledge him. Like I know Cody Smith McPhee has the momentum and I know he can easily win it here, but yeah, Troy Kotzer has showed up everywhere that he needs to show up and maybe we'll be at a point now where people are feeling, okay, let's acknowledge Troy Kotzer because Cody Smith McPhee has won so many, maybe the tide will turn. Maybe they'll be, you know, more receptive to giving Troy Kotzer the award. So yeah, that's my kind of rationale for like thinking why people might go for Troy Kotzer. Um, and yeah, I'm, I, I am expecting it to be Cody Smith McPhee, but I'm also kind of expecting Troy Kotzer to surprise somewhere because everybody loves his performance. And like, he just hasn't really won anything significant yet. And now is the time where if there's gonna be a challenger for the best act supporting actor at the Oscars, it needs to be now. And Troy Kotzer needs to win something. So yeah, I think he does have a chance at SAC. And I, I don't want it to be him. I, it's kind of a wishful fulfillment pick. I want to see Troy Kotzer win. So I'm going with it, which might be foolish, but yeah, I I want to see him win. And, and I think now's the time. So yeah, I'm going to go with Troy Kotzer for, uh, for Coda. You're probably smarter betting uh, Cody Smith McPhee. But yeah, I'm going with Troy Kotzer. I'm probably going to regret it, but I'm, I'm, I'm taking a risk and I'm hoping it pays off. All right, so outstanding performance by a female actor in a supporting role. Well, this is easy. Ooh. I brought a prop this time. Ooh, yeah. You see that? Ooh, yeah. It's a broom. You know why? Because Ariana DeBose, she's sweeping. Wait. <laughs> yep. Sorry. Yep. I found that. <laughs> she has props now. <laughs> yeah. Ariana DeBose. She's she's winning this, guys. Like she's just she's starting to collect all the trophies. She has the balls, the momentum, the steam, the love. The only person that might be a challenger to Ariana DeBose is Kirsten Dunst for The Power of the Dog. Um, but no, I, I think it's going to be Ariana DeBose. She just has a lot more noticeable, tangible buzz surrounding her performance. It's a triple threat performance that actors love because she's singing, acting, and dancing her heart out. She hits you hard with the emotional stuff as well in this movie. So yeah, it's gonna be Ariana DeBose. Kirsten Dunst would be the only person I could see surprising here. So yeah, that's what I'm going with. All right, next up we have... Oh, outstanding performance by a cast in a motion picture. So the SAG Ensemble Award. So we have Belfast, Coda, Don't Look Up, House of Gucci, King Richard. This is actually a hard category to predict this year because I can actually make an argument for all five of these. Like, don't look up, even though I know it sounds ridiculous, it could win here just because of the sheer amount of star power in it. Like, it's voted for by actors this award, so they might just go for like the one with the most big names in it. Like, it's it's insane how, you know, this how stacked that cast is in Don't Look Up and they might just go for it. I can see that happening. But also like Belfast is sort of like the only sort of film that could really challenge um, The Power of the Dog at the moment at the Oscars. So maybe they'll go with Belfast because I, I remember when I first watched Belfast, I was like, oh my God, this is so well cast. The ensemble is amazing. So I can see them definitely going with Belfast. But also with the SAG Ensemble, they have been known to go a little bit alternative, like when we had Hidden Figures win, or Parasite, or, or Black Panther as well. Like, they aren't afraid to like go for a little bit of an obscure pick. And I would think Coda does have a chance here because, 
Yeah, we do have um, Troy Kotze in the Best Supporting Actor category. The thing is, Belfast missed, apart from Katrina Balfe, she got in, but yeah, Belfast didn't get any of the supporting noms for, um, what's his name, Jamie Dornan and Kieran Hines. They missed, which you know, doesn't really show a whole lot of support for it. Katrina Balfe got in, but that's about it. And then The Power of the Dog, in, although I know it's not really an ensemble film, it is in a sense, and it, and you do kind of need it at the SAG Ensemble. So The Power of the Dog, I mean, it got all the individual noms that it needed, apart from Jesse Plemons, it got Kristen Dunst, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch, and Cody Smith McPhee. It got all those, so but the fact they didn't get a SAG Ensemble is a bit strange. But then again, King Richard as well is a Best Picture contender, and everybody loves the cast in that. Like, it is a really strong support uh, ensemble cast, because, like, even though Will Smith is sort of the talk of town right now, everyone's been praising Andrew Ellis, Sinead Sidney, John Bernthal. So maybe they'll go with King Richard. And the same could be said with House of Gucci. Like, even though it's some of the acting is questionable, it's a lot of big names, and they might gravitate towards the big names. <laughs> so it's it's strange. It's 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 a difficult one to predict, actually. Like, I think this the, the smart money says it's Belfast. But I'm, I'm predicting something else here. Oh, I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna go with Coda. Yeah, I know it's it's probably not the, the, the smart choice, but that film is just so beloved. It's so heartwarming and like, it really is just so strong in terms of acting. And the fact that it's mostly made up of deaf actors as well. But there's a good narrative there for them to champion a film like this because they've not really had that win for. Kind of like when Parasite won a few years ago when you know we had the first um, Korean uh, cast to win. You know, it'd be cool to have an ensemble of mostly deaf actors winning. There's enough love for Coda to make it happen. Um, it's it is a bit of a gamble. This this prediction. I don't think it's a smart or safe prediction. Um, but again, I can make an argument for any five in this category, guys. Do let me know in the comments, who are you predicting with this category? Because I'm, yeah, I'm not so sure. Uh, and last, we have outstanding performance by a stunt ensemble in a motion picture. So we got Black Widow, Dune, The Matrix Resurrections, No Time to Die, and Shang-Chi and Legend of the Ten Rings. I think it's gonna be Dune. I feel pretty confident on this one. Like, it's the big Hollywood spectacle movie of the year. Like, the action sequences were, you know, very grand, very eye-grabbing. I could make an argument for No Time to Die because of the, um, the Kung Fu stuff in that. It was insanely good. Um, but Dune is Dune. Like, it's it's a Best Picture contender. It's, like, really, you know, being discussed a lot. It's got 10 nominations at the Oscars. Like, it's it makes sense why they would go with Dune in this case. So I'm predicting Dune for this category. Oh, crap! Sorry, I just scrolled down and I saw that they've got the television nominees as well. So, yeah, I should probably do these as well just so you guys know. All right, so for outstanding performance by a male actor in a television movie or limited series, I'm gonna go with, ooh, I'm gonna go with Michael Keaton for Dope Sick. Yeah, he won the Golden Globe, didn't he? So yeah, I'm gonna go with him. Uh, outstanding performance by a female actor in a TV series or limited series, Kate Winslet, Mayor of Easttown. Frickin' love that show. She's amazing in it. And I think, yeah, she's gonna continue her streak. Uh, and then we've got Outstanding Performance by a Male Actor in a Drama Series. It's gonna go to the one of Succession Boys. I'm gonna put my money on Jeremy Strong because he just keeps winning over playing Kendall Roy. So yeah, I think it's gonna be him. Although I would rather see Kieran Culkin win um, this time around because I thought he had more to do in this season. It was more about um, Roman series three than, than um, Kendall. So I'd rather see him win, but I think it will be Jeremy Strong. Um, performance by a Female Actor in a Drama Series. Uh, I'm gonna go with Sarah Snook for Succession, yeah. She surprised at the Golden Globes, was it? I think, yeah, I think she won there, didn't she? So I'm gonna go with her. Maybe Jung Ho Young could show up for Squid Game, but I'm gonna go with Sarah Snook. Outstanding performance by a male actor in a comedy series. Jason Sudeikis, Ted Lasso. Glenn and I have finally watched Ted Lasso. We finally get the love and the hype for a guy, so I totally understand why he's been winning. Yeah, he's gonna win. Although, I do love Only Murders in the Building, so if Martin Shaw or Steve Martin did win, I wouldn't be upset about it, but I don't think it's gonna happen. It's gonna be Jason Sudeikis. A second performance by a female actor in a comedy series. Oh, Gene Smart for Hacks. Yeah, because I got that one wrong in my 
Golden Globes predictions. I haven't seen Hacks, but yeah, she's all the rage. And she's also double nominated because she's up for Best Actress in a limited series as well against Kate Winslet in Mary Town. But yeah, she'll get the win for Hacks here, I believe. Love to see Elle Fanning win it for The Great. She's so good in that. She's great! <laughs> and I uh, also love Juno Temple and Hannah Waddingham in Ted Lasso. And maybe Hannah Waddingham could surprise, but I, I doubt it. Jean, Jean, Jean Smart for Hacks. Uh, outstanding performance by an ensemble in a drama series, Succession. <laughs> that's that's it, guys. It's gonna be Succession. Outstanding performance by an ensemble in a comedy series. Ooh, uh, that's a tough one. Maybe Hacks? Uh, uh, I haven't seen it. It's hard for me to say when I haven't seen it. I would love to see Only Murders in the Building win it, but yeah, Ted Lasso could also do it as well. It's a very well cast series. Oh, um, even though I haven't seen it, I'm just gonna go with Hacks just cause yeah, it's it's really got a lot of word of mouth. I haven't watched it, but I've heard a lot of people talking about it. And outstanding performance by a stunt ensemble in a comedy series. Uh, so we've got Cobra Kai, Falcon, and Winter Soldier, Loki, Mary Town, Squid Game. I'm gonna go with Squid Game just because of the whole zeitgeisty nature of it. I feel like it's just it's really having a moment culturally, and I think the SAGs are gonna want to honor that. So yeah, I'm gonna go with Squid Game, but they might give it to something like Loki or Falcon and the Winter Soldier. No, something that's massively watched by everyone. But yeah, I'm gonna go with Squid Game for that one. There you go, guys. Those are my <laughs> SAG predictions for the 2022 SAG Awards. What do you guys think of mine? Do you agree? Do you disagree? What are your nominations for the SAGs? Do you like me in the comment section below? I love hearing from you guys. If you guys have enjoyed the video, help support the channel by hitting that thumbs up button. Also, if you haven't done so already, click subscribe. And if you want to follow me on my socials, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, they're all in the video description down below. And for more things related to movies, TV, the Oscars, and popcorn culture, I'm Loki Airfield, and I'll see you next time.